Okay, is Dr. Susan uh, Renzo, and um, she is from Euraccess, and she will be talking about Euraccess at 10. So welcome, Dr. Susan Renzo Wasu. Thank you so much, Professor Anis, and thank you so much uh, for all of you to uh, invite all of us here. Sorry, I'm just getting my presentation ready. And uh, I hope you can see it. So yes, thank you so much for allowing Euraxis to be part of this wonderful event. Women in science and research, of course, is very close to our hearts. Women really are at the forefront at pushing the boundaries of, of science. And we kind of, as you all know, in these COVID days, uh, juggling so many other jobs, you know, taking care of children, taking care of, of household chores, etc., and still, you know, doing our job as scientists and researchers. So we as Euraxis are very um, keen to support our researchers across Southeast Asia in advancing in their research career. So I just wanted to um, briefly introduce you to a tool which I think is extremely important for researchers, female researchers in the region that are looking to accelerate their research career. The project that Jenny and I are part of is called uh, Euraxis. And this is really a wonderful opportunity for anyone that's joining us today that is looking at opportunities to develop their research career, either by um, spending some time in Europe on, a, on an attachment, on a fellowship, or to work with partners in Europe on a joint research project. So Euraxis is a, a platform that is managed by the European Commission in Europe, in Brussels, but it is supported by 42 European countries. And what they all have in mind is to make it easier for us as end users, researchers, to find out very easily where the opportunities are for us to develop our research careers. So a fundamental part of this project is the joint jobs and funding portal. And on this, you will find daily thousands of research jobs, of fellowships, of funding opportunities all across Europe. So very easy to navigate. And this is really something that I'd like to, to all of you to suggest that you kind of look uh, at this portal to see whether there's something there for you to take your career further. We also offer a partnering tool. And I think this is very important for researchers in the region that are looking to expand their network. They want to work with other researchers, other female researchers across Europe and actually across the world. We have this partnering tool where you can look very precisely for researchers that are working in your fields, for research institutions that you may be interested in, but also uh, for industry partners that are part of the Euraxis network. So a great opportunity to expand your network of collaborators. And we also offer a hosting database. Now, you know, very often when there is a fellowship opportunity, the onus is on you as the applicant to identify a supervisor, a host in Europe. And this is not always easy. We all under time constraints. It's not easy to, to navigate a, a research area that is as huge as Europe is. And here we have this hosting database where you will find concrete offers of researchers in Europe that are looking to host researchers from anywhere in the world to spend some time with them working on a project either at PhD level or at postdoc level or even at more senior advanced uh, research level. And you find a lot of information. And here, for example, you will find also information about how Europe is dealing with gender equality in research, what kind of studies uh, have been uh, carried out, what kind of policies have been put in place to allow research, female researchers to excel and to have access to the same career path as their male counterparts. But also, of course, you find lots of information in general about who does research in what area in Europe, where are the funding opportunities, what kind of support is available. And here I want to just recommend to you the personalized assistance that we're offering. If you're interested in spending some time in Europe, we have a network of um, collaborators that are there to assist you in making this uh, ambition a reality. And of course, Jenny and I are in the region. Uh, we are the new Euraxis ASEAN team, and we have lots and lots of activities in store for you. I just put here uh, a QR code, which will lead you 
to our website and there you will find all the different activities that we have in store. One of them, Jenny is re, uh, doing this at the moment, our, our European Research Days, Thailand and Vietnam, which are happening in December, uh, early 3rd and 4th and I think 10th to the 12th. And there again, lots of opportunity where you can go to spend some time in Europe how you can benefit from this huge, big European funding program that's about to be launched uh, at the beginning of next year called Horizon Europe. And of course, you can also network with ASEAN participants who have already benefited from European funding and to expand your network that way. So with this, thank you so much for giving us the platform to share this with you. And I really look forward to the rest of the panel discussion. So thank you so much, Professor Anis. Thank you so much, Dr. Renzo Basu, for the good introduction to your access. We, we are happy to see a, a, a very good network um, networking opportunity in Europe. And I hope that all the participants here take the opportunity to join your access and look into the website. And later, I think Dr. Jenny will uh, tell us even more about that. Okay. So now um, we would like to introduce ourselves, which is the Asia Pacific Women Inventors and Innovators Network. So with this, I am going to invite our, pres our first president, which is Professor Dr. Fauzia Ahmad. So she's a professor in geotechnical engineering and also a geotechnical engineer and researcher at the School of Civil Engineering, University Science Malaysia in Penang. So she specializes in monitoring of hill slopes, and she's also the currently the president of um, My IGS, an international geosynthetic society for the Malaysian chapter. She uh, is actively involved in consultancy research, and she has produced uh, numerous innovation products, which have been um, recognized internationally. Um, and also locally through competitions. Among them, the, as, in, as the Women Inventor at the Women World Scientific Award, and also at the World Innovation Achievement Award, and also the European Women Inventor and Innovator Network International Award. Okay, so she has also two granted patents and one trademark and two copyright for inventions. So I would like to welcome uh, our president, our first president, Professor Dr. Fauzia. Um, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, did she leave us? Okay. Yeah, I think she lost the network for, uh, somehow. Okay, so if not, then we would go through the uh, our second speaker, which is Dr. Magda Dilini uh, Teodorido. Um, she represents the Marie Curie alumni chapter. And um, one second. And she is uh, she is the current chair of the Marie Curie Alumni Association on Genders, Equity, and Diversity and Inclusion. Today, she is going to speak about Marie Curie uh, and also about uh, their in initiatives towards uh, gender equality and diversity and inclusion. So, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Magdalini. Hello, uh, hello from Europe. Good morning from my side. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Invitation. It must be very early for you. No, it's okay. It's 9.15. <laughs> it's it's okay. a normal working time. Okay. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, I think it has to go. Do you see this now? Yes, uh, you just need to open the slides. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Okay. 
So thank you very much for the invitation and I'm really happy to be here and I hope this will um, be only the starting point for a collaboration um, with, uh, with uh, be, I mean, with us and other associations or initiatives uh, that we can um, take together. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, you already know my name. Um, I am... I am I'm an academic track research fellow at Newcastle University and the hub for biotechnology in the build environment, but I'm also the chair of uh, the Marie Curie Alumni Association relevant working group. Um, I just thought it would be probably um, useful to spend one minute to uh, introduce um, myself to you. So. Um, I have a quite um, interdisciplinary uh, path in research. I started as a civil engineer in um, 2006, and, and I, then I, I did a PhD in science for conservation, which was funded by the Marie Curie Actions. Um, and I also, um, which was already like, um, from, for me as a civil engineer, that was a move to more like the sciences. Sorry. Um, um, and um, in between 2010 and 2018, I worked as a, um, as a research and teaching fellow at the University of Cyprus. But also in that period, it was for me uh, the official uh, starting a point uh, to advocate for um, gender equality and in general uh, equity, diversity and inclusion in research. So it was in 2014 that um, we founded the, um, the relevant working group uh, within the Marie Curie Alumni Association. And um, as you can see, um, in 20, 2018, when I actually got my individual fellowship and I left Cyprus to move to the UK, um, I was elected as the chair of um, the Gender, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. Um, I've now moved to a new position, um, which is more like an independent position, um, but I st I'm, I'm still the chair. Um, and I'm, I'm still, it's still like a parallel work that takes a lot of my time. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really I'm sensitive, let's say, and I, I'm always happy to work uh, towards a fair um, work environment for everyone. So I, want, I wanted to say a few words about the Marie Curie Alumni Association, um, in case you're not all familiar. Um, the Marie Curie Alumni Association is a non-profit uh, uh, organization based in Brussels. It was founded in 2014 and it's all about um, people that have benefited from the Maris Klodowska Curie actions, which is um, um, a European uh, Commission action to promote international mobility for researchers. So far, over 120,000 researchers have benefited uh, from these actions. And um, the Marie Curie Alumni Association was created to extend the benefits beyond the formal contractual um, Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions experience. Um, we now count over 70,000 members, which makes us one of the biggest um, or I'd say one of the most important uh, researchers association in, in Europe. Um, of course, our members are not only based in Europe, because if, if, um, if you know, Maris Klodowska Curie Actions are also open to researchers from outside the European uh, Union and, of course, the associated countries. Um, there are different pillars within the association, career development, networking, science policy, science communication, and innovation. And it is uh, structured in a way, I mean, there is the board, there are the ex-officio members, and um, 
some very important um, parts of the association are the, the chapters, which are it, their, their main characteristic is the, um, the geographical location. So we have the UK chapter, the Asia Pacific chapter and so on. Um, but we also have working groups and the working groups are focusing on specific aims. Um, and one of these is the Gender Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Working Group. There is an article on the MCAA magazine, which was issued in March 2020, in case you want to learn a bit more about us and our objectives, but I will try to summarize them um, with this um, bubbles. Uh, so we are we are also active from the very beginning of the association. Um, only our name uh, changed uh, because we went through a rebranding process last year, and that was because the former group was uh, particularly focused on uh, women in science, uh, which is still a very very important. Um, um, category, let's say, of our activities, of our aims, uh, but we are um, also trying to um, address um, the need for uh, tackling discrimination beyond any individual characteristic. So we are now um, um, also very active in um, um, facing discrimination uh, for other types of um, characteristics such as ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, um, disabilities, uh, age. Mm, there are many more um, refugees, scientists, for example, um, financial background and so on. So we are um, we are aiming at investigating challenges, develop possible solutions in order to boost equity of opportunity at all career stages and at the, and all, as well uh, to promote a healthier work life balance. We are trying to achieve those goals uh, through different means like empowerment and training, promoting networking and mobility, organizing workshops, seminars, conference sessions, surveys participate in research projects, producing role models, books, um, and so much more. And we are now, um, our working group is now uh, comprised of five different task forces, communication, policy, training, empowerment, and leadership, diversity and inclusivity, and projects. This is uh, just a patchwork of our last year events. Um, as you can see, we're quite broad. Uh, we organized an event um, um, on the topic of family planning and whether that competes with leadership in research. Another workshop about role models of women in STEM and entrepreneurship. Uh, we um, co um, authored a statement about Black Lives matter in research and higher education. We joined the EU hackathon, um, the EU versus virus challenge, and that was mainly for addressing the, the accessibility needs. So to um, have activities that are accessible to everyone, especially to researchers with disabilities. We are also active in specific topics like research in the artificial intelligence area. Uh, we published um, videos uh, for um, promoting um, LGBTIQ um, researchers. Um, and also um, uh, an event that was very important was about gender equity, diversity and mobility in Spanish research, which was in collaboration with Spain, Portugal, chapter and that was more like for how how easy and how important it is to keep researchers and give offer opportunities to researchers to stay in a particular particular geographical locations we have also published role models uh, role model books which are um, available online and if you are interested please let let me know i will share the links with you and you can use them for um communicating um, or promoting uh, women participation in sciences. 
Um, and also, I don't know how much time I still have, but I, I, I was, I remember we mentioned that it would be probably nice to refer to some of the European Commission poll strategies for facing gender equality. Do I still have some minutes? Yes, you have about uh, three, four minutes. You can okay, can. thank you. So um, um, it's not it's not easy to uh, summarize. Thankfully, it's not easy to summarize the um, European uh, Commission uh, policy about gender equality in research. There is a lot happening. It is a priority actually to have gender equality and gender mainstreaming in research. Um, these are uh, we could, we could say that there are three main objectives to um, ensure gender equality in scientific careers at all levels, gender balance in decision making bodies and positions, and integration of the gender dimension in research and innovation context, including sex and gender analysis. Uh, these objectives are aiming at. Um, um, are aiming at three different levels. One is at the member states and associated countries. The second is stakeholders, like research performing organizations, including universities and research funding organizations, and the European Commission, of course. Um, a very, very important document, uh, which I would like to mention to you in case you don't know, is the Chief Figures Report that is being issued every three, three years. The last one was in 2018. And it was actually, this is a very, very important uh, source uh, for uh, gender equality in the uh, European research area. Um, and what the last issue told us is that things are moving in the right direction, but more is needed and we need to do it faster to achieve a good gender balance in the near future and tackle global challenges. On average, women outnumber men at student and graduate levels. Um, and there is a broad gender balance at the, P at the PhD level, however, their distribu distribution in the different scientific fields of study is uneven. And I would like to show you those two graphs, uh, which actually show that university and graduate students' uh, percentages are quite similar. From the postdoctoral employment to the executive level, women are less and less well represented. So we, we really see that there is a problem when we when leadership comes into the uh, discussion, uh, for example, you can see that 45% um, um, is the percentage of women participation at postdoctoral level, and it drops to just 21% at the executive and professor level. So from one to two women to men at postdoctoral level, we drop to one to five at the most senior level. And this is also very important for us um, when organizing events now, because I don't know if you remember, but there is this keyword leadership a lot in our activities. Um, and I also wanted to show you this because actually it, it looks like that there is a persistence of gender stereotypes in STEM. Okay, so if you remember, this is the graph in general, but this is how it goes in. So there is Actually, for even from, from early stages, it is uh, the, the gap is stronger in, in STEM still. On the positive side, European Union is integrating the gender dimension in the content of scientific literature uh, better than the world average, which is a very significant uh, increase, um, which actually re can result in, sign in significant increase of the uh, quality and re reliability of outcomes, as they will reflect the biological characteristics, needs and attitudes of both women and men. Some other useful tools and publications is the Gender Quality Achievements in Horizon 2020 and Recommendation on the Way Forward. There is a gender sensitive communication toolkit that you can find on the European Commission websites. There is a, the Gender Equ Equality in Academia and Research tool, which provides universities and research organizations with practical advice and tools through all stages of institutional change, from setting up a gender equality plan to evaluating, evaluating its real impact. 
There is a gender equality training toolkit that can create efficient actions and positive change. And also what is very important to mention, and I didn't because it actually, it was actually um, 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 the source of these data is that the European um, uh, Commission has dedicated funding already from Horizon 2020, but of course this will be part of Horizon Europe as well, has dedicated funding to gender equality. So to research proposals that aim to investigate uh, and um, propose solutions uh, to uh, ensure um, gender equality. And that was all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Um, you can see our email here and our Twitter account. So feel free to follow us. And I would be more than happy to um, listen to your feedback and ideas for future collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Magda. Um, it was very nice to hear from you about the gender equality, um, all the initiatives that are done by Europe and I hope any of the researchers who are interested in this topic, uh, feel free to contact Dr. Magda and uh, also um, if they would like to have more information on this topic, uh, please feel free to talk to her. Uh, we will also have a question and answer session later uh, after all the panelists have finished speaking. So you are welcome to put in your questions in the chat box and later I can um, read out all of them. All right, so now, um, sorry for the, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Magda. Sorry for the earlier um, hiccups, technical hiccups. So now we will try again to have our um, upwind president, uh, Prof. Fawzia, are you ready? Okay, so I, I already read her bio, so maybe I will just read out her topic today. Uh, she's going to talk to us about upwind. Prof. Fawzia, are you okay? Uh, are you ready to you know? Okay. Just now. <laughs> okay, so uh, Prof. Fawzia today will talk about Upwind or what we are about, uh, the Asia Pacific Women Inventors Network, and also about uh, women and innovation from ideas to inventors. Okay, Prof. Fawzia, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Anis. Uh, now I would like to share my. Um, okay, I can share. All right. Okay, you all see the slide? Yes, bro. Okay, right, thank you. You can just make it like right. a slideshow, bro? Okay, great. Yeah, this is on slideshow now. Is it not? Yes, yes, it is now. Yeah, it is now, right? Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Fauzia, the, currently as a president of Edwin. Uh, I would like to actually talk about, oh, sorry, this is a, uh, I should go for, <laughs> sorry, the, 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 okay, let me just escape first. Uh, I should introduce the Edwin first. Okay, I would like to introduce Edwin uh, in a way that, um, okay, uh, currently I'm the president of it and of course I'm from University of Science Malaysia and I see uh, some of the participants are from USM and other universities locally, I mean in Malaysia, Alhamdulillah, uh, you have managed to join us and be a member. I know that uh, about more than almost 100, I think more than 100 already be a member of EPWIN. Uh, thank you very much and we would like you to support us uh, for our agenda. Yeah. Okay, um, currently we have uh, set up uh, board members. We have board members and um, the country that involve uh, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, and Vietnam. And soon uh, we will have uh, other country in Asia Pacific region. Uh, and you know that Edwin is uh, Asia Pacific uh, Women Inventor and Innovator Network. Uh, therefore, we are actually under the affiliation of Global Wind. There is a global uh, woman inventor innovation uh, innovate, uh, in, innovator network. Okay, so our Edwin executive uh, member currently we have advisor which is a male, uh, Prof uh, Mustafa Al Bakri. He's ambassador of GWIN Global Win, and uh, as uh, as a president uh, currently is me, and then we have Prof Kosum, uh, 
uh, the speaker and Jenny also the speaker from Philippines, uh, of course, from uh, Thailand. And we have uh, Prof. Januarti from Indonesia, uh, Doctor Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Nur Hafiza from Unimap, and we have Anis, uh, Prof. Anis, as you, as you know, moderator today. And we have uh, Dr. Fiza, yeah, a, a committee member, a, a normal committee member from Unimap, and Dr. Dewi Surya, Suryani Halin, and Dr. Hasliza. And of course, we will have other committee members from a uh, country which uh, will join us later. We would uh, have a lot of, uh, you know, um, sisters country that uh, will be our representative for this EPWIN. Okay, uh, currently uh, Global Week is in UK and we have already set up this uh, portion. And of course, Australia is in, New Zealand is in, uh, and Vietnam plus until India, yeah? until India and onwards. So we'll try to get all the involvement soon because we just started up last month and uh, we got the consensus uh, consented from uh, our Dr. Bola Oba, I forgot her name, Oga Lisi, I think, Oba Lisi, yeah, Oba Lisi from UK. He's the CEO of uh, Global Wind. And uh, she was uh, with us uh, previously on on uh, in our meeting. So what we what we uh, would like to have in our in our agenda is that, of course, uh, with this networking, we are actually uh, to support uh, support the progression and development of innovation, uh, women in Asia Pacific region as well as globally. And uh, we would like to have the network uh, networking among innovation women within the Asian Pacific, so that we can have uh, you know strategy and so on uh, in terms of connection in research, uh, women in science as well as in research. And we would like to raising awareness of the innovation innovative women in Asia region and Asia Pacific region also as globally, because we 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 know that some of uh, us are actually maybe working or study in abroad, and they would like to join us in Asia Pacific region. And at the end of the day, we would like to also uh, give them, I mean, to assist, yeah, to assist in the advancing of women with bright inventions and innovation so that they can achieve success in the Asia Pacific or global uh, marketplace. So this is our so-called like um, objectives, yeah. And then, uh, we we definitely uh, have as a as a equine networking. Uh, the networking can be described as the gathering of individuals. Uh, we know that uh, some may be housewives, some may be you know not professionals, but we it doesn't matter as long as they have ideas, they have things that they want to share, and where this sharing of ideas is important in terms of its concept, experiences, and so on. And uh, our role is also to give advice and to support whatever ideas and things that you know we, we wanted to um, um, address in this um, network. And then at the end of the day is to find the answer to question within the subject of inventing. So this is the platform, okay? This is the platform. Uh, and I think it's uh, quite a, a new platform and we may get, all the you know um, maybe new idea in terms of how we should operate and how we should do things that you know the member uh, would like to. So there will be a, a, a big meeting. I mean, uh, with uh, all the gathering of information later, we'll call for a, a, a meeting to gather all the uh, members so that you can have our you can be with us. You know, in terms of to know what are the leaders or updates that you like to know, uh, that would be the, the thing. And then, uh, in terms of the membership, okay, in terms of membership uh, of this, uh, what is will be the benefit? Uh, I wonder why this thing is uh, okay. Oh, sorry. In terms of the membership, we would. Um, we cannot go. Okay. Edwin is an inventor network. 
is a voluntary membership organization composed of individuals wishing to encourage the development of new ideas and to promote the spirits of innovation. And of course, for sharing information yeah, through discussion, seminar, conferences, which will be, will be, I mean, uh, uh, we will be, I mean, think of the activities. Okay, we will uh, start to. Currently, this is one of the activity that we um, did, and hopefully, it will be many more. And Edwin Network is also to accomplish the goal of by focusing the individual collective experience and expertise and then to assist uh, inventors and innovators through process of bringing the idea to use either through commercialization or non-commercial uh, commercial education to public betterment, okay? And um, last but not least, of course, we are talking about uh, every network will bring forward inventors to compete to the next level through global win. Because uh, you know that uh, maybe some of you are new here, so global win in, uh, I think to, tomorrow, not tomorrow, it is on Wednesday, there will be a award uh, winners for the global win because they have a competition and uh, there will be a winners for the, uh, all the inventors that already compete and do their pitching and so on during, uh, for the past, uh, last month. Um, and of course, I would like to congratulate to the winners. Yeah, uh, that will be, uh, than in, in two days time. Of course, uh, at the end of the day, our hope is that to be visible globally and to get recognition with related agencies in the Asia Pacific region. And of course, uh, our challenge is to get members registered and develop active networking, especially across the region in collaborating research and innovation. It's more or less the same as uh, my, my recovery. And hopefully we can have collaboration also with uh, Europe and so on. And Edwin have uh, been planning for positive, healthy and active activities following the vision and mission of uh, GWIN, yeah, Global WIN. And then under Edwin, we will take all the opportunities to work as a team and to ensure our members will get benefit, okay, for the inventors to grow and to nurture. Uh, their invention uh, to a better position, hopefully, yeah? Because we don't want the idea to stop there. We would like the idea to be proceed until the IP and for commercialization, hopefully. So our aim is to incorporate not limited to just professionals. We will open to anyone, inclusive of housewife, entrepreneurs and students, and that have creative ideas, then uh, so that we, they can develop to noble products and process through our team. And uh, thank you. And I think uh, one of our members has already um, give the, I mean, membership form in the chat, in the chat part. And hopefully who are interested, uh, who are here today that wanted to become a member, you can do that. Yeah. So thank you very much for, uh, this is actually just to introduce Edwin. So can I proceed to the next one? Yes, Prof. Uh, interest of time, just make a brief uh, talk on your topic, which is women okay. and innovation from ideas to inventors. Okay. About okay. five to seven minutes, Prof. Is that okay? okay. I think I, I make a minute that. Okay. okay. Thank you, Prof. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Anis. So I go on to the next one. Hey. I'll go on to the next one, which is. Um, we, I've got this problem with uh, with our video. Okay, never mind. Okay, uh, the next one would be woman innovation from idea to invention. So this is a, just a, a fundamental, yeah. How to become a woman uh, in in uh, science or in arts or whatever is okay. But then we wanted to be uh, going towards uh, from idea. That means we. I think all of us have idea. Yeah, but. In terms of um, the idea, can it be translated into some kind of, uh, you know, technology or sometimes of processes or something for us to build and for us uh, for us to have to believe in it? Yeah. So I will talk about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, my content will be what is idea, and the other type, the, the the next one will be step to invention and then the invention itself and what will be the awards, yeah? That is more on, on the case history or more on the, my experiences. 
So in terms of what is idea, idea is the plan uh, that, that you, I mean, it is a thought, okay? it's a plan or suggestion about what to do. Again, an opinion or belief and something that you imagine or picture in your mind. So at the end of the day, the thought, the plan, the opinion, imagine and belief, we, we have to jot it down. We have to think about what would be the best. Would you want to be some, some, uh, something that we can produce for uh, all of us uh, to use it, you know? So, or is it um, to, to make it um, the, the, the thing to be uh, able to, to create something yeah, into some, some uh, the idea becomes some kind of product or some kind of process or some kind of uh, things that it can, um, you know, make it um, useful for everyone, especially for us, yeah? It can be for the kids, it can be for the old, old people, it can be for anyone which we thought of, okay? Okay, we can imagine, yeah, that uh, all nations, as we are from either in any country, any cultural or any uh, uh, citizens, uh, all nations have a wealth of creative and inventive people, you know, because uh, some people, they, 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 they are very inventive. They know how to, to improvise things, but it is, of course, very from cultures and experiences. So maybe what we can see is that with this imagination or with this creativity, we can, uh, you know, throw out those kind of things, you know, to, to spark the, the thing out of it and to make it some kind of uh, reality, okay? And one of the best way to spark great new ideas is to give creators and inventors genuine opportunity to develop the ideas. So we want to see what will be the awareness, how, how uh, uh, inventor or creative, uh, creative person can become inventor. So how? Yeah, that's why I put, post a question of how. So there are five steps actually for turning, um, turning an idea into an invention. Okay, these five steps uh, you're talking about, of course, uh, the idea you need to document it. Yeah, this is the way. If not, you will lose the idea. That means you have to write down what your thought would be. Are there a steps? You know, like for instance, we are talking about recipe, perhaps. And eh? that's why a name of secret recipe, uh, something like, you know, uh, or, or trade secret or something. You have to write down what actually you, you got it. Okay, uh, what actually is in your mind? So that at the end of the day, you know what you are looking for, you, you got the idea, it's just that you don't show your idea to other people, just think about it and do the research. Then the next step will be, you need to research it. In terms of resources, in terms of technology, in terms of processes, in terms of simplification and so on. This need to be done in the research element. Okay, whereby that's what, I think women nowadays, they are clever, okay? Because we, we are clever people in a way. We can, we, can, uh, we, we, we can do multitasking in a way, right? That's why we, we need to have those kind of uh, idea to do it, not just document it, we can do research on it and we can plan and we can make sure that all the research that we do is workable and it can be reachable and it can be uh, you know, uh, applicable. Those are the things. This is important. And then after doing that, of course, with the idea, of course, we must make sure that we can make a prototype. That means if, let's say, it's a recipe of cooking, okay, I give an example of the housewife, like, because they may create some kind of recipe, and that recipe can be of a challenge. Not everyone know about the component of, you know, whatever things inside and methods, you know, how to make the cake fluffy and so on and so, on, so forth. So the thing is that you have to make a prototype. Once the prototype is uh, there... Just uh, to remind you, we have, you have about... Oh, one or two okay, all right. There. So, okay, uh, we go to uh, the, the steps that, okay, after prototype, we have a file uh, pattern. That means uh, this is where we are going to give the awareness where you need to have a pattern of copyright and then, of course, you have to become, uh, you have to sell it, yeah, market. 
Okay, I think that there will be that. And then uh, I'm just showing you what, what are the men and women. This is sometimes something that we, we need to know. We know things that there has been uh, done uh, before, okay, uh, which is uh, we are talking about uh, printing press, we know uh, light bulb, airplane, and all on the left side is all uh, by the men, and these are all by the women inventors, yeah? Which is not, not so far ago, but this is something like, you know, like the computer, uh, caviar, and then the life raft, all these things. These are famous women inventor. I think all of you know the name if you were to browse through, yeah, later on. Uh, to share with you, uh, this is my last uh, slide lah, to share with you is that uh, as an inventor, of course, I've done all those parts which we are talking about from idea till uh, till uh, we try to go for commercialization, we do the IP and go to uh, commercialization and hopefully that, you know, uh, with this award, uh, we know that the, at the end of the day, we have to, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of the creativity, we need to also, um, you know, um, let people uh, know, know that what we are doing, you know, from, from there on. So from there, we can go for all the competition or the conferences that, that uh, need us to be, to be aware of. So I'm showing you uh, there are parts that, you know, uh, these things is actually give you motivation, okay, uh, through idea until to become the inventor. So these are the award from uh, Malaysia scenario where we have ITEX in Malaysia, but of course it's international. Uh, we have ITEX, we have Bio Malaysia, we have NVAC. So these are the things that we're going to expose to all the, 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 the invention, inventor, okay? And then these are the awards uh, which I've had, of course, uh, from uh, Geneva and then Innova, from Brussels, and then from London, and then we have Ewin, Jiwin. Uh, which is uh, this G-Win actually, uh, they did, uh, E-Win, uh, I mean, uh, what they did is uh, they have the program in 2013. I took part in that and alhamdulillah, I managed to get the, the award for that. Uh, and we have also in Korea. And I've been in many uh, Korean invention, women international uh, invention where from since 2009 until 2016. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, with this, it will motivate all of us and hope that um, uh, don't stop there. Yeah, don't stop there. Um, so these are the things I'm good at. So thank you very much. Uh, terima kasih and salam to all. Okay, thank you, Prof. Anis. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Prof. Fauzia. Um, thank you for the um, motivation, motivation, motivational talk as well as the introduction to AppWin. So we have put in the registration form for AppWin. So anybody who would like to join our network is welcome. Uh, you can fill in the Google form and we will ha be having a very, um, a very big gathering soon. Uh, so if everybody gets registered, um, soon we will have a meeting which will encourage all members uh, to meet and together and to share ideas. Okay, so now without further ado, we go to the next speaker, which is Professor Dr. Kosum uh, Chansiri. Okay, um, so she is a professor in the Department of Biochemistry, uh, Faculty of Medicine, Sri Nakarinowirot University, Thailand, and also a professor in the, bio, uh, in the Center of Excellence in Biosensor in the same university. Her specialty is in biochemistry and molecular biology. And today she will be talking to us about the research and development on the innovations of a rapid diagnostic test using DNA biosensor for detection of pathogenic microorganisms in human, animal, and food products. She has won numerous awards in Thailand uh, and also internationally. So um, without further ado, uh, Professor Kosu, are you ready? Yes, I am ready, but uh, I cannot start my video because the host has stopped it. Okay. So could you please, to... yeah, let me in. Okay, Dr. Jen yes. will uh, share your video. Okay, the yeah. floor is yours. Right. Okay, have you seen my video? 
not yet. I think. Uh, Yeah, I, you are allowed to do it. Actually, I'm not sure why you keep on disappearing. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, le, yeah, yeah. What, wait a minute. Go. I have to share screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can share screen. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. It doesn't work. <laughs> Does it work? Um, I will share it for you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, while waiting for the sharings, uh, first of all, yeah, is it this one? Yeah, first of all, I like to uh, thank Abwin for inviting me as one of the speaker. And um, you can yeah, as, a video as well, I think it would be great. Can I? Yes, go ahead. Start my video. Yes, we can see you. Right. Yeah. Uh, my, my topic today will be uh, like ingenious and innovative achievement in development of rapid screening DNA strip test for COVID-19. And uh, not only my talk will be on my experience, but I also would like to share uh, the idea to, to you all if it is possible. So I would like to start with my uh, research background. As you mentioned, I am a professor and a researcher at Sinakarin World University, Bangkok, Thailand. And my expertise is in the area of biochemistry and molecular biology, especially for uh, development of rapid screening tests for human pathogenic microorganisms, such as virus and bacteria. Could I have slide too? Yes, okay. And as no, not, not, not that one. Yeah, as you know all that uh, this year, all over the world have a hard time in a problematic situation due to the pandemic disease caused by COVID-19. And uh, each country has its own survey and control of the virus. And each country encounter the same situation that uh, routine medical diagnostic test laboratories are overwhelmed with many samples from patient and suspected carriers. And uh, the gold standard method for detection of uh, COVID-19 basically uh, approved by the WHO is real-time PCR. But anyway, the gold standard method for diagnosis uh, is is expensive, even though it is sensitive and specific, but uh, each country requires expensive equipment and complicated uh, apparatus. So only the state hospital can afford this kind of device. So my job is to uh, develop an easy and rapid screening test for detection of COVID-19, but the sensitivity, the specificity should be comparable to real-time PCR. And this is my question. So now it's come to my job. As I mentioned that the aim is to create the new rapid screening case. What is the benefit out of that? The outcome is not only will be beneficial for early diagnosis and the treatment, but also epidemiological control and prevention planning of the virus as well. And in the social aspect, uh, this kind of uh, rapid screening will be, will be useful for increased qualities of life and as well as reduce the disparities of the people in terms of medical diagnosis. So equity, people can access to the kind of treatment. Uh, for the truth, at first, I must declare that uh, I was hesitant to do it because uh, during that time, it was locked down. My, each country is locked down. 
My hesitation is not because of the research facilities, because uh, such as financial support, manpower, or laboratory, but uh, only COVID specimen have been restricted at that time. So this is a big problem. So how can I get the specimen? And that was my burden. And then I recall that one of my graduate PhDs was, uh, she, she is now medical technologist and I call her for some advices and help. So finally, I managed to collaborate with the Department of Communicable Diseases, uh, Ministry of Public Health in Thailand. So the, at that time, so I managed to get the sample from, from the Ministry of Public Health and that will be the point of my start. Next, please. Uh, since, since February 20, yeah, this is the timeline of my work. Uh, COVID-19 emerged in February 2020s. And during Mar, I submitted a project proposal. And I did start a project during late April. And then uh, I spent about two to three months until July, mid-July. Uh, the first prototype has been launched, has finished. The prototype of COVID-19 has been uh, uh, completed. But the only thing is that uh, even though the prototype is success, but the uh, test kit need to be validated. So we start the validation project in the beginning of July. And uh, at present, at present, uh, the, the project, the second phase of the project, which is the validation of COVID-19 DNA strip test uh, has been, uh, running and we are up to complement uh, COVID-19 DNA strip test to investigate about 300 blind samples in comparison to the real-time PCR and the analysis will be completed at the end of this year. Before I move on to another slide, I would like to say that uh, during the process of the time, I discussed with my two important persons one is the president of the Nakarin Rural University and the other is the director of the Strategic Wisdom and Research Institute in the Nakarin Rural University. Because uh, to run the project, we need the financial support and also we have to be approved from the ethic committees and that's finished within uh, a very uh, quick time. So by early 2021 next year, the test kit will be launched to the university hospital for in-house use and evaluated. So what I would like to point out is that at first I was challenged from my friend because they keep asking me that uh, as you are the expertise in uh, developing the screening test, what can you do for the countries or even for the world? I think it's too big, but for the countries, so at that time I was hesitated as I mentioned because of the problem of the sample. But once it is a challenge, so I have to uh, work out and move on. So if I didn't accept the, uh, the challenge and stay in my comfort zone, the first prototype of COVID-19 DNA strip test couldn't be possible. So there is going to be the first step, which it is the most difficult and important and requires decision-making. I am telling you that uh, I, I do not wait for everything to be ready or complete since it is not going to be possible. Or it's, it's not going to happen. So once I think I'm not 100% ready, only uh, 70 or 80%, uh, I, I move on. I accept that challenge. And then I would like to say to you all that uh, just do it. Even though it is a small achievement, small step, but it is better than doing nothing. And uh, taking a small and move a small step and move forward with improvement in each step, then it will become big achievement. When the challenge come, uh, fundamentally there are three outcomes. Firstly, when there is challenge, and your choice is ignorance or no action, the only answer is nothing happened just like you in the comfort zone. But if your choice is action on the challenge, you will have two outcomes. 
One is failure and the other is achievement. But if you failure, it is a lesson and learn. You can improve, you can develop, you can try again until you achieve. But you must put a lot of effort for restarting. And once your effort turns to success, then you will be gradually earn the trust, credit, collaboration, network, and many more. But the most important win beneath our wing is our family. I can say that my family support me and understanding what I'm doing. Without them, it is not possible. Balancing between family and work is the art of management. As you know, we are the woman and uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, um, we play many roles at the same time. Yeah, such as family law as a daughter, mother, sister or whatever, and many more, as well as working woman. So you have to balance your life. And lastly, I would like to encourage uh, all the females here to start and finish your dream, your idea, your goal, or whatever you would like to do, but you but still haven't done it. Keep yourself strong, not only your mind, but also your health for your achievement. And what I would like to say in my last slide is that start rather than stop, perform rather than postpone, challenge rather than concede, and just do it. Don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you so much for Kosum and right on the dot of the time. Uh, so I think everybody should be inspired about uh, just do it and do all the research and do not wait for everything to be in line before um, or be ready before you actually take up any challenge. So thank you so much Prof Kosum for the inspiring talk. Okay, so we go to the next speaker and it is uh, from Indonesia, Dr. Janwarti Jaya Eka Putri. And she is a lecturer in the Institute Technology Sepulo November. She is also the director of Indonesian Geopolymer and Green Concrete. Her expertise is in the green concrete, self-healing, concrete durability. And uh, she has uh, numerous patents, seven patents uh, filed and numerous awards, among them being the best researcher in Indonesia and also from the Mining and Minerals Industry Institute. She will be talking to us today about how to do research and innovation during the pandemic. So Dr. Januarti, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, my sister, Professor Anis. Uh, I will share my presentation five. Hopefully it works very well because it is around like uh, 200 megabytes because there are a lot of uh, video. Uh, you can call me Yani. Uh, I was born in January. I was, I was born in January, so uh, it's very easy actually to, uh, to remember my name. Uh, basically, my work is related to making concrete. So because I'm a civil engineer, so all the innovation, intentions are related in the concrete. It is uh, not easy as a woman to cast the concrete, of course. And today I'm going to share my experiences during COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But uh, before that, uh, I just want to share the information to you. Uh, in my country, only five women as the minister, so in total, uh, 34 ministers. Uh, actually, we had a woman as president in 2001 and 2004, like in the Philippines also. Uh, they have a very strong president also. It's, and uh, But unfortunately, very few Indonesian women are involved in the research innovations and intentions. In my department, for example, we have only 15 women from total, yeah, almost uh, 60 lecturers, so less than 30%. And we, we know that uh, especially women, we are suddenly become a teacher at home. Uh, as every place has been closed, we feel stop and just it because we must stay at home immediately. For those who are a career woman, sometimes it's so annoying when our boss asking us for a sudden meeting. 
it seems that we are so tired just staying at home. Now every woman must stay at home regardless of their status. Uh, they are a housewife or a career woman, just stay at home, obediently. Then, actually, we have an interesting question. Does pandemic 100% not allow us to create something innovative? Uh, yeah, let's talk about this era. Actually, we are very lucky. Despite there are many things we need to adjust, we must be grateful because first, we save money from the transportation fee. We have many opportunities to join many webinars, such as today's webinar. So you don't have to go to Italy, Malaysia, Spain, Thailand, Philippines, or Indonesia to attend the seminar. Uh, and then you can take care of your kids while you are in the meeting. Just do not forget to close your camera sometimes. It's dangerous. So you, your kid will take over your uh, presentation file. Uh, you can work in a garden or cook in the kitchen when you need to attend a webinar. Or just that, uh, like I'm doing now, I'm giving online examinations to my students in another computer. Actually, God bestowed us some multitasking abilities. Then the key is you must to motivate yourself. Be happy. Remember that if there is a will, there is a way. Okay, I will say again, a really determined woman will always create an innovation. For example, I changed my house here uh, as a workspace, as a laboratory, concrete laboratory. For example, this undergraduate student uh, one of my uh, students, uh, she is attending this webinar also. Uh, she is doing her research in my house. I just ignore that my uh, that my garden becomes uh, messy a bit. She can freely make artificial aggregates uh, in front of uh, my house. Okay, I will show you the video. Okay, and next, during this pandemic, when everyone study online, students cannot go to lab, especially in my department. They cannot make in concrete. Then I decided to make a YouTube channel for e-lab to help the students, because I think not only my students, but other students need this information. Surprisingly, the subscribers number increased exponentially. It is almost 4,000 and suddenly I become a YouTuber. Then I have to carefully check my clothes when appear in the video. This is a good thing because I have a reason to buy clothes online. Okay, this is my student. So she's explaining about the experimental work online and next uh sometimes going out is very important for us because we need uh, uh sometimes uh, fresh and refresh our stress and release our stress but you have to carefully select a place you have to choose the somewhere uncrowded for example i found an idea to create souvenirs when we uh, visited uh, Sidoarjo Mud, the largest volcano mud in the world, we can help the victim and the people uh, living near the mud to sell the souvenirs. We we select some uh, some some mud here in the field. This is the source of the hot mud, and still oozing out a huge disaster in Indonesia. Okay, and then we create this uh, kind of souvenir. Uh, we can uh, uh, make uh, the, the be beautiful souvenir to help the people. So it, it is uh, marketable and it can containing microbes, uh, bacteria, and fungi. Okay, next. 
again, uh, another one we can find uh, an, uh, any idea if we close to the nature, of course. For example, two months ago, we visited mangrove uh, park near the campus. We found out that the plantation will be better if we protect the mangrove suits from the sea wave. The bamboo fences here was adapted from uh, Professor Suzuki. I saw some a student from Yokohama National University attending this uh, webinar also. So uh, Professor Suzuki is our uh, partner in Japan. And again, uh, this is the, the one that we get and we found a very good idea to help the, the mangrove plantations. And it is a very innovative uh, uh, work and huge work and we can work with the government. And uh, my message here, uh, please never think that you are too old to become an inventor. Sometimes we can be a leader if we are strong, but if we are not so strong, we just step backward in the middle to become a partner of other innovators. If we cannot, we can step a bit backward to become a good supporter. For example, I just supported, uh, sorry, this one, uh, this one I have uh, idea to, yeah, this one we have people surrounding. So we distributed the food to those in need. It is not related to the, uh, the research actually, but this is a kind of motivating and reminding ourselves that we are a part of community. Uh, we have to do something even though it is, not, uh, it is a very simple thing. And okay, the next, sorry, the next, sometimes- uh, uh, January, just to remind you, we have about okay. one minute left. <laughs> Okay, this is only uh, just one slide, remain. Okay, I will show you uh, when I uh, I decided to just a uh, supporter. Uh, for example, I supported these two beautiful uh, girl and they just uh, 16 years old when they won the international innovation competition with double gold medal. Their idea is very interesting. Uh, it was how to neutralize the toxic in the river with another toxic materials. Okay, well, uh, this is uh, the conclusions. First, of course, be happy because this is our era for multitasking women. And second, be creative, just do something you are enjoy at home. Be grateful and pay attention to the nature and take the inspiration from the nature. And be motivator for yourself, for your family, for your community. It will make you more beautiful. And finally, just take the position uh, you are comfortable with. You can choose as a leader, a partner, or just a supporter, or you can choose all at once. Thank you very much. And uh, I shall go back to Professor Anis. Thank you so much, Dr. Januati. Very interesting yes. pictures and very interesting video on uh, using the nature, how to make your own house, the lab, as well as, uh, you know, how to implement and uh, uh, stuff to help the public and the community. Very, very commendable. Thank you so much, Dr. Januati. Yeah, okay. Fine. So now we will have the last speaker, uh, Dr. Jenny Lind. Um, she is also the chairperson of the Marie Curie Alumni Association. Uh, she, uh, a chairperson of the Marie Curie Alumni Association in Southeast Asia. She used to be the research fellow of the European Center for the Information Systems in Münster, Germany. She is also the country representative for Thailand and Vietnam for Euro Access. Uh, so she is going to talk to us today about the five keys to work-life harmony for women in science. Uh, 
Uh, Dr. Jenny, now the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much. I have to say I am very much uh, inspired by all of the speakers. Uh, it's incredible uh, what uh, these women uh, have accomplished, you know, and how we are, we are you know, brought together uh, despite the distance, uh, despite the miles that separates us, we are brought together by science and by research. So my presentation is very short because uh, I think that we are now having information overload and I'm sure the attendees are, you know, really getting into, you know, processing all the things that they've, the wonderful things that they've heard. So my part is uh, pretty much a, a practical, maybe some practical tools uh, that we can do as, uh, as women. Uh, let me just uh, share my slide if I can. All right. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, perfect, thank you. So just five keys to work-life harmony for women in science. Of course, these are uh, keys that are not set in stone. Uh, it always depends on your uh, circumstances and where you are. But I thought, you know, in my experience, um, I started actually in a, in a, in, a, in the human science, in the in the you know practical sciences. Um, but then uh, I also moved back to humanities and social sciences, and then I went back again uh, to the natural sciences. So I thought that, you know, our experiences are really not linear. You know, it's, there is no set path. It really depends. Uh, but I thought that these are just some things that I wanted to share uh, on a personal basis also in my, in my experience. So the first thing that I thought um, that we should remember as women is that we should believe that we deserve it. I think sometimes, you know, when uh, when we are asked, you know, um, uh, do you want to have like this leadership position? Do you want to be a principal investigator? Uh, because of the, the the responsibilities that we have, and because we are sometimes unsure of what we we do, um, then you know, then then we don't accept it, or we believe that maybe somebody somebody else, maybe uh, a male deserves it more. I think the most important thing that we, we should remember as women is that we deserve it. You know, we deserve um, to succeed. We deserve to, to lead. And uh, not only because of a selfish reason, but because people will be better for it. The community will be better for it if we lead. There is a, there is a quote um, from the Philippines that says, when you educate a man, you educate an individual. But when you educate a woman, you educate a generation. And I find that very powerful at the same time, also very humbling that we have a responsibility, not only right now or not only to our families, but to, to the people that we teach, the people around us, and of course, to the next generation. You know, this is, um, this is my childhood. I, I live uh, with, you know, the three C's, I always say, uh, which is coffee, uh, chocolate or chocolate and the carabao so this i come from very beginnings so my days were um, were defined by the three c's and um, i've made it a point that to look at these three c's the coffee the chocolate and the carabao and then made it to, to my new three c's which is competence character and courage and these are the things that you you know you you try to develop especially as a researcher and you harness it especially as a scientist so wherever you are even if you have humble beginnings you have to um, make sure that you develop your competence um, and then you also develop your character make sure that you are not stepping on other people when you go up and of course that you have the courage to make sure that you discover what it what what the world is in, in store for us so these are just some things that I did. Um, I always believe that you have uh, different lines. You know, you have uh, you have different avenues that you you want to discover. So I I've I've I make it a point to go to the United Nations Council for the Status of Women meetings every year. Try to get into the discussion of um, what it is to change the world and what is the role of women um, also in the development base in the development world. So I think that's very important. Um, in Harvard, I was in in a group of scholars discussing about uh, local uh, about local and international issues. And right now, I still have my TED Tech TEDx talk. Um, and uh, these are also some of the things that I continue to, to do, really find the platform to speak. 
uh, find the platform also to share my research. And the second thing that I think we should know, we should know is to uh, our strengths and to acknowledge our weaknesses. So we have a lot of strengths and uh, we can you know, harness that. But at the same time, we also need to know that we are not perfect in every way and that is completely fine. And the great thing about it is you, you will have people who can complement um, the things that you, you, do, you, you cannot do alone. So there, it's, there is a celebration in your strengths, but there should be a, a recognition also of your weaknesses. And that only makes you a better person, a better researcher and a better scientist. So we live in a, you know, a volatile and uncertain, a complex and an ambiguous world. But I think that if you put yourself forward and you, you also discover who you are as a person, then you can discover many things. I think uh, our president, uh, Dr., uh, Professor Dr. Fauzia was talking about, you know, you, don't, you can be a housewife uh, or you can be, uh, you don't need uh, to have like this full academic degrees in order to be an inventor, you know, or to be an innovator. I think it is innate in us to, to discover if we allow it, you know, make sure that, you know, our curiosity really allows us to see beyond what is what what is there and who, you can imagine uh, the things that you can you can accomplish if you allow yourself to do that the third thing I wanted to say is to communicate um, as women sometimes we just want to hold it in we don't communicate we don't say things if we sometimes if we are aggrieved you know if we if we are hurt or if there is um, if there is an idea, a great idea, but you don't share it because we are we are shy or we are we are embarrassed because maybe it's not it's not the correct way to do things. Maybe somebody else has a better idea. I think it should it should be very important for us to learn to communicate. It's also in the same way as in family life. We have to learn how to communicate with our partners and to also to communicate with a, uh, with a, you know with extended family around us about how we feel and how we are managing. This is very important, um, uh, especially for us who have children. It takes a village to to raise a child. I think it's very important that we are able to to share, you know. Uh, what our, our needs are and to be, to, you know, to, to, be, to be able to really have that communication lines established so that we are not burnt out or we are not uh, feeling restless and defenseless uh, or, or like, you know, really, really, really giving up sometimes because it's too much. So please try to learn how to communicate a bit more. Also, another important thing is to learn to communicate about your research, you know? Sometimes you're a little bit shy to say, oh, I'm successful. Uh, or like, I have this great idea and I think it will revolutionize the, the, the world. I think we have to be each other's best cheerleaders. We have to cheer for ourselves, but at the same time, we also have to cheer for one another. It's very important for the world right now. Um, yes, and we have to listen, of course. Uh, sometimes we forget to listen because we are too busy. We, we are multitasking and it's just uh, too many things, too many stimuli, you know, all at once that we forget to listen um, and we just, immediately respond. I think we have to remember that, that it's important that we start to, to listen a bit more, not only to other people, but also to ourselves. We have to listen to ourselves about what we need. We have to have this self-care as well. And then also, of course, uh, make sure that the other people understand this. This is one of the things, if you want to watch something, I made this video um, on a TEDx, no, they made the video actually of a TEDx talk. Uh, that, I done, that I have done and it's still uh, available in YouTube, what happens when a woman flaps her wings? And when that happens really, a lot of more magnificent things happen. So don't clip your wings, allow yourself to fly and allow yourself to find uh, where, you know, the best version of our, yourself is. And, you know, not only are you better for it, but your family will be better for it and the world will be better for it. So these are some of the things that I did, you know, with, with with the flappings of, of my wings, I think it's also my, uh, my responsibility to make sure that I empower others. So we have one of the projects that I was uh, 
I was happy to be a part of is STEM Power Girls. It's a, it's allowing, uh, it's giving a, an opportunity for young girls to be future ready when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, and for me, who didn't come from the natural sciences uh, or tech, uh, originally I was telling uh, the girls, you know, I came into the tech very late actually. Uh, but you have like your whole lives ahead of you to do, to find out what is there. You know, um, Dr. Magda was talking a while ago that she she is doing a project in artificial intelligence. There's a lot of things that you really can you can discover. And I think we have to make sure that we empower the next generation of young women scientists and young female leaders to be able to to continue and to sustain this development. Um, some of one of the things uh, I'm also in in, um, in a very um, inspired as well is to make sure that um, each woman, you know, uh, each each young girl um, develops herself and not to be uh, impeded by whatever you know um, uh, limitations that she has. So this is one of the things that we do, girl rising. And my daughter, I have a daughter. She's nine, and she also has her own project. Her project is to have play spaces and reading corners for far flung areas. Um, in our in our province, so I think it's 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 my way also to instill into my daughter this importance of sharing, but also taking charge and leading also change. If we want to change the world, we have to start that. We have to also inspire the next generation to do that, and of course, we have to inspire our children to be able to do that. So this is her, her project, and I'm very proud of her for for doing this. She this is an annual project for her. And as my last slide, um, this is really it, you know, um, we are all queens, of course, but real queens fix each other's crowns. I think we have to really, uh, you know, empower ourselves. And in my, in my way, I think it's also meaning to never, to never stop learning because life never stops teaching us. And then it's on the last, the last slide, um, as a last uh, key, is to find our tribe. And this means to find people who share the same hope, share the same inspirations, you know, share the same dreams. This, for example, is a group of, of women who are in technology uh, in the Philippines, but this is actually a global campaign as well. And I encourage you to join if you are in science and technology. This is one family that I have, one tribe, another tribe that I have. This is the business and professional women. These are women in the business and professional field who are active in, in, in everything. And I learn every year from them. And finally, this is my new family. This is the new group, <laughs> Upwin. And uh, uh, I think this is a great way to get together innovators, inventors, and people who, and, and women who want to come together to form a family, to form a community, to inspire each other. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Dr. much, Jen, uh, for the nice talk and inspiring us. I think all the women here are very inspiring and have done a great job. Uh, um, there's so many wonderful inventions and so many wonderful activities that everyone has been doing uh, despite the pandemic. Okay, so now we are in the question and answer uh, session. And I think the first question is for Dr. Magda. Um, when we talk about gender, are we referring to the male and female binary? The statistics show only two lines. I wonder about the LGBT uh, representation. Dr. Magda, if you would like to uh, respond to this. Yeah, it's actually um, this is this is true. I mean, in the in the case of the graphs that I presented here, but uh, there is a lot of. I thought, and I can speak for for our working group. This is this is the reason why we branded the working group, and this is why from um, calling it um, uh, gender equality and women in science, we are now calling it genders, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So. Um, there are uh, organizations that are particularly focusing on LGBTI on the LGBTIQ plus community, um, like the Stonewalk, which is a very important organization. Um, I agree with uh, with the comment. Uh, I think we need to. Um, um, 
tackle the um, actually to to take up with uh, and and modernize let's say our uh, our surveys so that we are more inclusive and and uh, we make sure that we do not exclude important characteristics so yeah i'm not i'm not sure if i can say more than that mm -hmm. but i can assure you that we are taking this into account um for for in in our activities thank you so much dr magda Okay, the next question uh, is from Dr. Rosmi. How to stay focused in our research during this difficult time? With so much of uncertainties and ambiguity, it is difficult to stay focused. So I think anyone from the panel uh, who, who would like to respond, uh, anyone? Uh, I think Dr. Januati just now showed very good uh, examples of how to uh, how to tailor your research and and maneuver during the pandemic. Uh, Professor Kosum also showed a good um, uh, a good way of not letting anything stop you. So, would anybody would like to um, address that? Maybe Professor Kosum first. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I like to mention about the network. If you have the network, for example, you have a research team, not only you, uh, anyone like collaborators, your PhD master students, and uh, you know the, we help each other. In my case, I have the network, and I work at home uh, with the laboratory. I, I think is is a little bit hard uh, because during the lockdown, it is. It was very difficult for us because we have to stay home. Yeah, but anyway, we can discuss by, you know, by Zoom or by Google Meet or something else. We prepare, we prepare the document uh, at home. And once the, the lockdown is uh, like, uh, it's less tension. So we, we work in the office, but not fully 100%, you know, full time. But anyway, we, it's better to do something rather than nothing. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, it's, it, to keep our mind off the pandemic. Right? Yeah, because to stay home is not quite fun. For the you know, you have to stay with your family for twenty four hours is boring. I, I can say it's boring because you have to to talk to somebody else. And I would like to talk with my friends or something like that. Even though with the zooming it's okay, but not with my family twenty four hours. You have to get out of the family sometimes, and and that's my opinion. And um, if you want, of course, you cannot focus uh, completely focus on work. Uh, anyway, for me, I work not uh, fully fully completely 100% i work like 50% and uh, you know relax some time during the covid time is it uh, inevitable you ha you have to do that but once covid 19 you know uh, getting better you know we we can start again yeah but now today in thailand uh, we we can work in the office on site yeah but anyway, some of my companions still work at home. Yeah. But my suggestion is that do something that you can do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Janwati, you wanted to add uh, a, a few comments? Yeah, just think uh, ourselves as a mother uh, because, you know, uh, mother is the teacher of the country. I believe that. So when pandemic uh, hit us very hard, especially in my city, it's very difficult uh, to deal with the uh, with, with this pandemic because you know people uh, don't care about uh, wearing mask. They just really go out, and then uh, it becomes uh, more severe and severe during this day. Even one day we have uh, uh, another more than six thousand yesterday. Uh, the new cases and uh, yeah, it's so scary and uh, what happened to my student you know like uh, everybody uh, you, yeah, feel scared uh, about, uh, yes. about their future and then I bring all my students 
to my house. <laughs> it's very easy because I understand uh, uh, as a supervisor, I have a bit responsibility of their future. So they work from uh, nine uh, in the morning to six in the evening. And uh, we eat together uh, three meals a day and work mm -hmm. together. And you know, like uh, my house become a laboratory. So uh, this is... Uh, I'm very uh, calm now because I can guarantee that uh, my students, I don't care they are stressed or not <laughs> because they have to come to my house and I don't allow them to uh, eat outside. It's very dangerous. So just, uh, yeah, just have uh, three meals uh, a day and I become their mother. They are, maybe they are closer to me than their own mother. <laughs> but, uh, I hope, I hope I can help them at least, at least, uh, I do it uh, for myself to become, uh, you know, uh, more relaxed that I do something for my students. That's uh, my opinion. And then that, Thanks that, so that's much, Dr. Generati. A true researcher and a true mother as well. Yes, that's right, because you are a woman. <laughs> okay, another question. Uh, it is to Dr. Suzanne from URAXAS. Um, uh, it is from Dr. Soon. Uh, her question is, could you please explain a little bit more on your access um, grant coming next year for women? Uh, yeah, if it, uh, yeah, or if you can direct her to any links or information. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Susan. And we don't have a Euraxis grant as such. Euraxis is an information provider and we provide information about grants that are offered under the European Union's uh, research program, which is currently called Horizon 2020 and will be called Horizon Europe. And okay. in this big program, we have uh, grants that I think are interesting to the audience today. One is the Marie Curie Individual Fellowships. Uh, Dr. Jenny also was a recipient of that grant. And we also have the European Research Council grants, a particular interesting one, the starting grant, which is opening for application in January. Um, but we're also promoting all the grants of the various European countries that are part of the European research area. So uh, 42 countries that have literally hundreds of opportunities. And uh, if I'm sure the slides uh, of today's uh, webinar will be shared, if you just yes. click on our website, you will find uh, really a whole host of funding opportunities. Some of them are actually specifically targeting female researchers. Um, so you can, can look at that. But um, our slides contain our contact details. So Dr. Jenny and I are very happy to hear from you after this session with your specific questions. So you, we can link you to uh, funding opportunities that are coming up in the next few weeks. Yes. Yeah, and Dr. Jenny has put in the link to your access on the chat box. So anybody who would like uh, more information about your access can click on the link. And I think later we will also have the webinar uh, on our Facebook. We, we, uh, Upwin has the Facebook and I think uh, Dr. Jen will help us to upload the, this talk. I, I see that there's a lot of people who couldn't join, uh, are very interested to hear all the interesting speeches. Okay, so I think um, uh, this will be among the last because we are overrun with time. Um, so uh, I'm just going to read out uh, one comment from Suchi Suryani. It's an, uh, such an inspiring and wonderful webinar. And uh, this um, talk will be uploaded uh, into the, at least into our Facebook uh, or maybe perhaps later to the YouTube. And um, uh, so that is, uh, she loves the quotation about men educate while women educate a generation. So she would like to know how does this quotation meet the reality? Is it true uh, or uh, yeah? So I think it was Dr. Januati who mentioned this or it was it Jenny? I'm sorry, I, I got confused now. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Januati also mentioned that with the work that she does, but I, 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 I did say the quote. I yeah. think the presence of everyone here, including the participants who are here, it's really proof that, you know, we are, uh, you know, educating, a gener because we are educated, we are educating the next generation. So that is really a responsibility that all women uh, in this room um, have. 
and all i'm sure everyone here is up to the challenge as well and even those who you know who do not you know we mother in different ways you can be an aunt or you can be like a teacher you know you can be a mentor so uh you really we we, we have this uh we have this innately in us and i think everyone is is ready to do that right i think the presence of everybody here is proof that everyone is ready to do that yes and okay so the last question i think is about the uh, dna uh, the covid 19 swap test that is uh, asking about uh, to prof kosum how do you collect the sample um, and um, how does it work and if it is possible to make a less painful uh, swap test yeah uh, prof kosum uh, if you like to I think you have to unmute first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Uh, about the the sample collection, uh, the only approved from the the WHO is that the nasal swab, which is painful. But anyway, we we're trying to work it out on saliva. But you have to accept the truth that the number of the virus that in the nasal swab. Uh, is much better because uh, the place for the virus is in the nasal swab. And once you found the virus in the saliva, it means that uh, in the nasal swab, it has to be much more virus rather than saliva. So, but we can, if you ask that we can use saliva or not, the answer is yes, but the sensitivity probably uh, less, less than you use the nasal swab. Uh, but it's uh, less invasive. And this is my, my question. Uh, that's my answer for uh, how can we use the other samples rather than nasal swab? The answer is yes, but the sensitivity is probably less than using nasal swab. And that's all. Indeed. What is it, What is another question? I. Uh, no, uh, that was just the how do you collect the samples? I think you already answered that. And yeah. how is it possible to make it less painful? That is through the saliva. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Saliva. So yeah. 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 So um, uh, there is some question about uh, urexes. Uh, is there any age limitation for women to do postdoc uh, with the urexes funding? But I understood that urexes doesn't provide funds, it just provides a portal for funds. Um, uh, is there any comment? I think postdoc is after, usually five years after the PhD, but I'm not sure about any age limit to that. No age limit, right? Well, uh, um, hmm, of course, ahead. it depends on, on which program the person is interested in, and there will be rules and, and, and regulations. But for example, the Marie Curie Individual Fellowship, which yes. is really a very prestigious fellowship to do postgrad, there is no age limit. This is a fellowship that is meant as a career advancement fellowship. So as long as it makes sense to the career track of the applicant, that it really takes her to a new level, then okay. uh, that person is, is eligible. But you know, we have uh, we have webinars uh, that which we held over the course of this year, and they're all on our website. So whoever is interested should just maybe take a look and then contact uh, either Jenny or myself, and we are very happy to give you details on that uh, opportunity. Okay, and I think um, the one, um, one more question. Uh, thank you for the inspiring sharing. What is your advice to women who struggle in keeping their jobs, especially in aviation industries, while maintaining money to pay bills and food to prepare? What about, uh, is it, how is it in the other part of the world, for example, in Europe, Philippines, Indonesia, in handling this? Uh, this question is from Dr. Kurt in, from Malaysia. Anybody would like to respond? Um, I think in the pandemic right now, everybody's having the same problem, right? I mean, those in aviation industries is really, really hard for them. And a lot of them have, uh, have changed their profession, right? To see which one can suit and produce an income. Prof Kosum, did you want to say something? Or Prof Dr. Januarty? Yeah, uh, in Indonesia also the same. The same, it, there's no difference. We are struggling with the, uh, we have to deal with the pandemic, but the economic become uh, very difficult. Or we have to deal with uh, our business but we have to be scared 
because of a high risk of uh, getting uh, uh, the, the virus. So uh, this is also very difficult for the government. And then the president uh, decided to, how to say, to, uh, to give a chance to every province to just adjust. If it is okay, just open it. No, lock, no lock, lockdown is allowed. But if it is not okay, according to the local government, just do some uh, lockdown. So doing lockdown uh, can be good, but can be, can, can be bad, especially for business. Uh, doing research, of course, almost, uh, almost uh, yeah, I can say uh, like 100% difficult. Uh, they cut the budget because yeah. the budget will go to the uh, how to handle the pandemic. Of course, uh, some target, some target of the research also being cut, but uh, at least uh, everybody should understand because uh, we have to do it for all. So uh, the same in Indonesia, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think we've uh, overrun with time. Uh, I, I know everybody is like have so many burning questions to ask and everybody is so excited. So I do hope that you, everyone will uh, join us at Upwin. Uh, the Google form is there. Please uh, join us and we will keep you up to date updated with our future webinars and I think uh, in the future webinars we will let we will invite the speakers to have uh, longer presentations I think everybody is uh, enjoyed the presentation so much this is like a teaser session so that you will be attracted to join our our group so uh, we wish uh, we hope for the best in the future so I would like to thank again uh, our speakers, um, uh, Dr. Suzanne, Dr. Magda, Prof. Fauzia, uh, our, our president, uh, Prof. Kwasum from Thailand, Dr. Januarti from Indonesia, and not forgetting our tech expert and also uh, Euro Access, uh, Dr. Jenny. So I think uh, I would like to close this session. Thank you so much, everyone, and I hope to see you again soon. Uh, please get uh, keep be keep updated from uh, at our Facebook and yeah. Thank you so much. Thank bye. you all. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Thank you, bye -bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take bye. care. Take care. How about taking picture together? Uh, huh? Yeah. For your support Miss, today, Miss secretary, no, Miss secretary already take yeah. a picture. Don't forget. I, I did. Uh, I oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Have, Thank you, Jen. We should ask. Uh, I did it. In all the participants to lock their, you know, to on their video so that the one participants. Uh, we had about Next. 100 yeah. just now, and now it has decreased. I think everybody uh, already uh, left, uh, but yeah, <laughs> really left. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind, just but, the panelists then. Okay, okay, all right. So, okay, yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen, so much for the hard work. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Thank you, Magda. I will thank go. You, I will. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.